I want to go through a brief tutorial on how to do a stationing with the new PLC 400 tablet. You can see I got my unit set up over there and I put a little piece of tape measure down on the ground to indicate an access line on a very simple demo file that I have. My control points on this file are in the top right corners of my file here. But what I like to do when I station, go to this little tab over here, go to my stationing tab. As long as my project's active, I can go ahead and access it. And this is what comes up. If you have a, uh, if you have a coordinate drawing, you must use one of these three options, manual, semi-auto, or auto. I'll go through each of them, but most of the time, you're most likely gonna bounce around between manual and semi-auto, one of these two. Auto is when you're using a target plate that looks like this. Okay, that's our, our target plate, POA 26, that you can use and set up on walls. And when you do an automatic stationing, Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, not going to lie, depending on the angle, but you can just set the tool out there. If those are set up as control points, it'll spin around and find them. That's what automatic is. Otherwise, semi-auto and manual are actually very good to use. Building line is used when you have an empty project. This is where you can import a station from one, uh, the, from the previous thing you were just using to a new project. You can import it in. This is station anywhere. If you have an empty project, you can just tap that and it'll station it just at a random location. You can be, again, doing an as-built or a measure and record of a certain area. And this is where you can adjust your height, uh, your station height. You can just tap that and adjust that at any time to indicate a new benchmark height. So I'm gonna, for my case, I'm gonna go ahead and do a manual stationing because I only have two points that are controls. If you have three, you can do semi-auto, but I'll start with manual. And here we go, I have uh, several control points I can choose from. I'm gonna start with CP1 and CP2, which are the top there. I'm gonna just measure them and go from there. And then I'm gonna pause the video for a second. Okay, I have CP1 selected both um, in the menu, you can see I just tapped it right here. And I'm on the nine foot mark of my tape measure here. Um, I'm just gonna use this here as my arbitrary control point, just so I can show you how this kind of looks. And obviously I have it level at the top. Let me actually level that a little better. There we go, got a little bit more level. Now, all I gotta do now is press measure and I measure my first control point. Now, my next control point, you see it turned green that I, I measured it. My next control point is only eight feet away. I wanna make sure it's very clear that when you set up a station, you want your control points to be as wide as possible and at, at a wide, as wide of an angle as possible. So what I mean by that is if you look at this huge job, if I'm laying out this huge, massive job, I'm gonna have a control point way on that corner over there and another control point way over here on this corner, which they do have here and I would just set the tool up in the middle and measure to those two control points. If those are dead on zero, that means that everything within that layout area is gonna be within that tolerance as well, which is great. But eight, eight feet on a small angle like this isn't gonna be the most ideal, but it's gonna be good enough to show you the button pushes that you need and what the information it's giving you. So now I'm gonna pause the video and go to my next control point and measure that. Okay, I'm now on my one foot mark, and now I'm gonna select on my tablet CP2 as you can see, CP2 is now grayed out and selected, and I'm simply gonna press my measure button. Both are greened out. Now my stationing information is actually kind of bad. If you look down here, station information, on the northern, my station says it's bouncing back and forth between 3 16 of an inch, and on the easting, it's almost an inch and a half. The reason for that, by the way, is just what I mentioned before. A, I'm using a tape measure, so my, my points are just based off a tape measure. My angle is extremely small, and the distance between the points is very small. So the, the tool doesn't have much to work with to really find itself. So this is obviously not that best of tolerance. You wanna shoot for obviously zero on the standard deviations of both the northern and the easting. Height as well, if you care about your heights, but if you're just doing horizontal layout, the height is actually, um, you, it doesn't matter. But on the left side, it says point information. There's number two points. Horizontal distance between them is only a 16th. So even though the points are only a 16th difference in when I measured it on my own, the station still has trouble finding itself because of the horrible angle I'm using. So I'm gonna accept the stationing, but just be forewarned that you wanna have a much wider angle, much long, longer distance, and obviously you want the stationing information to be a lot closer to zero. So I'm gonna accept it. And even tells you where it thinks those points are and how, how, it's, how it's measuring up to them. And on the right side, you have the information of the stationing itself. Now, before I press check mark, what I like to do myself, because I do sometimes shine my laser on the ground to help it find my points, I press the height button here, 
to pull up my height screen. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my laser on. One second. Laser can be turned on. And right now I got the laser shining on the ground. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, yep, that's where I want the laser to be so I can measure the concrete as my benchmark height zero. So set manual height. Everything's zero, no reflector height because I'm not looking at a prism. And I'm going to now press my measure button. So now the tool knows not only where my two control points are, but it now knows where the concrete is at zero height. I say check so that I can now measure out points on the ground of the laser. If you look at my my station over there, it's saying that that is five foot seven eighths inches off the ground, which looks about right from where I'm standing. I'm going to say check. All right. So now I'm in and I'm ready to lay out and I can get working. But that's how you station the unit, given it its control points. You can have three, you can have four, you can have as many control points as you want. But again, if I go back over here, stationing, manual, semi-auto, and automatic. Semi-auto, if you have multiple control points, all the differences between this and manual is you don't have to select which point you're going to. You just walk over there, measure them, and it's, by the third point, it's going to know where you are because it makes the mathematical and angular uh, judgments as you go. So try them out.